I have to admit, Albedo is a lot better than I anticipated. I thought that he was going to be strong, but just not this strong. Albeit, not without his setbacks. But Albedo is a very, very potent hero that can play within any team composition. What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. So first I'd like to get into Albedo's strengths and weaknesses. In terms of strengths, I have to say that Albedo, in my opinion, is one of the easiest characters to use. With his E ability, he easily amplifies any damage or burst damage output from any character in your lineup. The cool thing about his ability, as you guys can see on the screen here, is that his radius is so large and all you really have to do for Albedo is just get his damage up. By simply getting his damage up and maximizing his geo damage or the amount of geo damage that he deals, you can position him literally with anybody and find successful results. Where, in my opinion, I think Zhongli is designed for control of the battlefield. I think that Albedo is designed specifically for amplification and making sure you create as many opportunities as possible to deal damage. Not to mention that every time he ults, he increases your elemental mastery by 125, which makes creating elemental reactions with your team a lot easier. With that being said, he is not without his weaknesses. One of the biggest flaws that I found in his kit specifically happens when we're dealing with bosses. When fighting certain bosses, you have to really be careful and pay attention to where you're going to be placing his Solar Isotoma. Uh, with the Solar Isotoma, depending on where you place it, if you end up placing it too close to a boss, it can get easily destroyed, kind of nullifying the extra DPS that Albedo would basically bring to a team composition. So depending on the boss fight, I often found myself having to place his E in a different location or further away from the boss so I can still capitalize on the damage procs without the thing being destroyed outright. Fortunately, on his E, it's only a four second cooldown before you can replace, so it's not really that big of a deal. Now, his other weakness, I would say, is just kind of the same thing with Zhang Li, except a little bit more significant here, is that he has a very, very low basic attack multiplier, and it shows. The kicker with Albedo is, though, is, is that he's creating so many other opportunities to deal damage that it doesn't really matter. Um, if his basic attack is low at all. So what exactly makes Albedo strong? We're going to get into that as we talk about his abilities, and we're going to keep this short and sweet. A majority of Albedo's strength lies in his E ability. And what his E ability or his second ability, Solar Isotoma, does is it places a very large field. And what this very large field does, and this is something that I really underestimated when I first looked at his kit, is that it creates an opportunity to deal a lot of extra damage. When you place this ability down, any damage that is procced against the enemy or inflicted against the enemy can trigger a transient blossom. Let me say that again. Any damage instance can trigger a transient blossom. Now, transient blossoms, while utilizing his E ability, only happen every two seconds. But the cool thing about them is that it's just based on Albedo's stats. So however high your Geo damage is or defense or crit, crit damage, so on and so forth with Albedo is going to determine how much damage you can deal from these damage procs. Combine that with the fact that his E is only a 4 second cooldown and the radius lasts for 30 seconds, you can constantly plant and replant and it really makes using your ultimate ability a lot easier. And speaking of his ultimate ability, his ultimate ability is really, really nice. What his ultimate ability does is, on top of being a very low cooldown, low energy cost, 40 energy cost, you can use it every 12 seconds. If you happen to use this ult while his E or his second ability or solar isotoma is up, it creates seven fatal blossoms. Now the drawback to these is you can't really pick where they land, they almost feel kind of random so you want to aim them kind of in the center and hope they work out. But these also have a potential to deal a lot of damage as well. Albedo overall in combination with his ability to synergize with any hero and to create more damage output for anybody on your team. I found that Albedo is a lot of fun and you still have quite a few build options which we'll get into next. So when we get into builds guys things can get a little bit interesting because you have a variety of options. Now if you guys didn't see the live stream where we tested everything at Constellation Zero on YouTube uh, we tested 
tested a bunch of different builds. We tested Archaic Petro. We tested Archaic Petro with the Noble Sublige. We tested defense mains. We tested attack mains. We tested all kinds of different things to see what was most effective or what yielded the best numbers based on the situation. And when you look at his kit, things are going to evolve based on what constellation your Albedo is going to be and in terms of how you want to use them. So first, I want to talk to you guys about how I'm using my Albedo currently, and then we'll get into possibilities that you guys can do outside of that, both free to play and pay to win. So for the sake of example, I'm just going to be focusing on the helmet, uh, which is crit damage for me personally, the goblet, which or my, my, my cuppy, my cuppy piece, my sippy cup, um, which is going to be geo bonus damage and my Rolex, okay, which is going to be defense percent in this situation. However, I was teeter tottering kind of battling between running defense percent and attack percent. In terms of my stat priorities, I would say that my personal stat priorities are going to be defense, attack percent, crit rate, crit damage, geo bonus damage, and of course energy recharge. In terms of ideal artifact sets, I will say that if you guys are looking to maximize the amount of damage you guys are dealing with Albedo, I think best case scenario is going to be with a Geo Bonus Damage Cup. And you guys are going to be looking at Archaic Petra paired with Noblest Oblige. I think those two sets combined, like a two and two and then a one off, is going to give you the biggest results in terms of how much damage output you could deal. The reason why I say that is because even though Archaic Petra can increase the third, you know, with the 35% damage bonus at the end of the set, I mean, it's still kind of hit or miss as to what shields you're going to get, and it's all dependent on that strategy. So for now, until they release a set that increases their defense percent that's actually a five star set, I think that is overall, that's the best combo you could pretty much do with a Geo bonus damage set if you're looking for the raw elemental damage increase. Now, as someone like myself who loves to use physical damage, I wanted physical damage to work. I just haven't found a way to make it work yet. I, we did test Bolide, um, definitely tested Bolide with Geo bonus damage and attack percent and defense percent, but the numbers just didn't really yield um, as I anticipated because, again, his basic attack multipliers are so low. You can still get a pretty decent amount of damage, but what I found is if you're just looking for the consistent damage, the Geo bonus damage plus Archaic, and of course, Noblest Oblige is going to be the way to go. If we're just talking four star sets alone, let's say you guys pulled Albedo and you're kind of just moving up, you haven't gotten into five star gear yet. I think you guys can use anything along the lines of like Exiles or like a two piece Gladiator just for the attack percent, Brave Set, Martial Artist, pretty much anything that's going to increase his raw damage and or energy recharge. If you guys are looking to fudge it with the crit and maybe just get the, as much crit as you can, then Berserker is always, always, always a viable option. If you guys don't have access to a Geo bonus damage cup, you guys can use attack percent as well. Now, your next question might be, why do you have a defense percent piece on Albedo? And the reason why is because the simple fact that his E scales with his defense scaling. However, uh, due to the fact that my Albedo is higher constellation, I can use the defense percent to offset the amount of damage I'm dealing on my ult, so I don't lose as much damage on my ultimate ability. If I was running Albedo in a way where, let's say, I was anything less than constellation 2, I would most likely run an attack percent piece here in this slot instead of defense percent on the timepiece. Ideally, I'm looking for at least 50% crit with as much crit damage as I can, so a crit damage helmet will enable me to do that. If I'm unable to get 50% crit and or even a crit damage helmet, then I'm looking at probably running attack percent or crit rate in that helmet slot. Ideally though, no matter what you run, whether it's attack, defense, crit damage, whether it's geo bonus, attack, crit damage, whether it's geo bonus, defense percent, crit damage, geo defense, defense, whatever it is that you decide to run, the primary stats again that you guys are gonna be focusing on are crit rate, crit damage, attack, defense, and energy recharge. I think in terms of that pool, if you guys can get those stats as high as you can, you guys will find the most success that you can possibly get with Albedo. So now let's talk weapons. I know this is a very important topic of conversation because a lot of people, uh, you know, they've commented that they watch my videos like, damn D, you know, you got an R5 Summit Shaper. How are we supposed to 
even measure up to that. Like it, it, it makes it makes us feel like it's not even possible to deal any types of damage. So listen, um, I wanted to do you guys a solid and put some footage in the video um, that I took of using a level one Favonius blade. And with this Favonius blade, it was level one at the time. Uh, Albedo was only C2. And his C2 can be a little bit confusing, but we'll break that down here in a bit when we get into what exactly his constellations do. Because when you read it through, it sounds like some crazy out of this world stuff, but it's a little bit more simple than it seems. So again, for the sake of this example, guys, we're going to be using the level one Favonia sword. Let me give you a snapshot of what all of my attributes are. 44% crit, 161% crit damage. Uh, we're looking at about 1,000 defense with about 792 attack. All right, so here we go. Uh, big thing here is to understand that the aura, like you guys can see that he's still dealing damage, um, pretty significant damage, even considering the fact that he only has a level one weapon on. Um, so you guys can see the amount of numbers that are going up. We're gonna pop his heel real quick. So we're just gonna put a little freeze on them real quick. You guys can see this again. Old damage, 11,299. Um, again, with a level one Favonius weapon um, and just, you know, the gear that we have. Now again, keep in mind the talents are only at 6. We haven't moved any further than this yet, so this is very doable by most players. Alongside with the Favonia Sword, because I know probably all of you got one of these by now. And then of course, uh, this is uh, if you guys are opting for Constellation 2. So there you guys have the Favonius uh, Longsword uh, showcase that I did a while ago. Uh, but again, we'll get more into the constellations and the explanations of how those work. Before then, I just wanted you guys to see what that would look like with a four-star weapon and five-star artifacts. Now, in terms of actual recommended weapons, the thing about Albedo is you can pretty much get away with using any weapon in the game, except for Sacrificial Sword. Don't use Sacrificial Sword. Please, just don't. It's, it's literally a waste. But but the reason why you don't use Sacrificial Sword is just because his E is pretty much permanently up anyway and the cooldown time is so low that you don't really need this special ability. If you guys are looking for more of an energy recharge stack and you guys are looking to get uh, your energy back so you can use your ult faster in terms of 4 stars, I think the Festering Sword that you get for free right now from Dragon Spine is probably the way to go. And then of course, if not, then you guys naturally can use Favonius. Outside of that, I think the BP Sword is really strong alongside the flute are probably the best options in terms of four star weapons even prototype ranker can be good now i think it's a no-brainer that you're probably not going to be using lion's roar <laughs> but we'll just mention it just in case uh so lion's roar sacrificial sword are probably the only two no-goes in terms of five stars i gotta say my top two choices are going to be summit shaper and akila favonia and the reason simply being because they help you offset your low basic attack damage right so with the 49.6 percent attack increase on summit shaper if you're taking it to 90 this is going to allow you to build a more defensive build while still getting a little bit of attack power alongside the shield strength increase if you're running with other heroes that use shields like Diona, Zhongli, Xinyan, so on and so forth. If you guys are opting for a kill of Favonius, this physical damage increase is also going to offset the fact that Albedo has very low basic attack damage. It's also going to increase his attack power uh, depending on obviously what, uh, what refinement you guys have here, but up to a maximum of 40%. And not to mention you get a heal and you get the AoE proc here for the damage, which is always nice when you're in the middle of a fight. Skyward Blade is also cool just due to the fact that you get the increased normal and charge attack damage. However, it's not my top choice in comparison to the other five star one hand swords. So these two, in my opinion, as of right now, December 2020, I think are the best options until new swords come out. If I absolutely had to name a four star weapon that I'm most likely going to use, pretty much no matter what um, it's probably going to be the festering desire the reason I say that is because this sword is pretty much free and it seems like it was really just designed for albedo all in all though guys I think that any weapon you can find success with outside of lines roar and sacrificial sword but choosing a weapon and then making it work with your particular build 
can work wonders because Albedo is just so versatile. Now, as we get into constellations, guys, I ask that you please forgive me. <laughs> I've been working on this video for like eight hours. And uh, the first time I recorded it through, I actually did it constellation by constellation by constellation by constellation. I got stuck at C2 because I didn't understand how C2 works. So that took like two hours of testing with like a bunch of different things to try to figure it out. Unfortunately, with constellations, you only get one try. <laughs> so you can see it on the footage and my old footage after recording you know an hour of it i was like uh yeah this is trash so we scrapped it and now we're looking at obviously the new footage so bear with me um i'm just gonna go down and i'm break down each constellation as to what this does for you so you guys can kind of understand how much of an impact this is going to have for you overall let me just say up front that c1 or c2 is pretty much all you need in my opinion for albedo unless you're looking for min max purposes meaning you're trying to maximize your abilities so you know the extra skill levels obviously are going to give you more damage and things like his c6 which we're going to talk about up front is going to help you kind of mitigate the fact that you have low basic attack using albedo and it's just going to increase your overall damage across the board as we move down to c4 c4 is mainly just increasing plunge attack damage his plunge attack damage multiplier actually isn't too bad and if you guys are looking to maybe pair albedo with xiao i think you could have a lot of fun with this in terms of his three and five i mean it's just skill upgrades but let's get into the meat and potatoes of the one and two with this constellation one it's a no-brainer it just basically increases the amount of energy recharge makes it a hell of a lot easier to get your ult and if you guys are looking for dual geo comps or single geo comps like if you're just using albedo by itself um it's it's phenomenal it's it's just really good it's just a really nice upgrade um extra energy especially with the low cost geo ult is really really nice now here's the thing C2 is really complicated. <laughs> it's not complicated. It's really simple. When I first looked at this ability, it really confused the hell out of me, right? Because I read it as, all right, when I get this ability, it's just going to overall increase my damage with Fiddle Reckoning, and I'm just going to be smashing through the wall. What I didn't understand is that the first description is actually just part of the whole damn thing, and all it really affects is your ultimate. What this is really saying is for every stack you get, it increases your ultimate damage and your fatal blossom damage, basically the blossoms that come up if you utilize your E, uh, your solar isotoma, right? And then you ult, it's going to increase the fatal blossom damage and your ult damage, right? By up to 120% of your defense. So when you get to his c2 this is where you're going to start to shift from okay maybe i'm just running attack percent builds to be safe so i can just get the best of both worlds to then switching over to okay now i'm just going to run defense right so i'm gonna go from instead of running a geo bonus damage attack percent crit damage with 50 plus crit rate i am now going to switch over to a geo bonus damage defense percent crit damage with over 50%. And the reason I say this is because once you switch to this build, the defense is going to allow you to maximize the amount of damage you're gonna deal on your transient blossoms when you're using your solar isotoma, right? The problem though is before you get to C2, you're losing a lot of ult damage because you're not getting this factored in. So before you get to C2, attack percent is a safe investment unless you're using albedo in a way where you're just putting him in there in the fight, just using his E and you're just maximizing his defense so you can get those procs while you focus on other characters. If his ult damage is still really important to you, then I think attack percent is the better build before C2. Once you get into C2, I think that defense is all out, hands down the way to go because then that defense is now going to increase your E damage. And of course, it's going to offset the loss of damage that you would lose from not running attack on your ultimate and that's where things start to change other than that though guys his kit is really really straightforward um i'm actually really excited that like his his wall i guess per se was actually lower than other characters but this is not to say that you actually need uh, uh you know any of these constellations uh, at all to run albedo i think albedo is a great hero by himself with zero constellations if you guys are looking for more proof in the pudding you guys can check out the live stream that i did where we tested albedo at c zero i'll make sure to post the link to that at the end of this video
Now, to answer your question, I know a lot of you guys are probably having right now after we talked about all this is should you summon for him? And the answer to that question is if you like the hero, make sure you test him out first. Test him in the test run. I've been hearing a lot of positive reviews about his test run phase, even with the gear that he had. Um, see if you really enjoy his play style. Uh, Albedo's play style is different. Okay, uh, it's very fluid, it's fun, it's fast, it's rapid, but you have to make sure that you enjoy his particular playstyle before you summon. If the answer is yes, then I say obviously go for it. You can, again, fit this guy into any team composition. If you guys are on the fence or you're not really for sure as to what to do with this hero, then I would just wait until another hero comes out. If you guys are more the playstyle or if you guys are just into waifus, again, use right around the corner. Shao's probably after that. And then, of course, Hu Tao and probably Kamisato Ayaka. And with all of those heroes on the rise, if you guys are unsure, by all means, just wait. Uh, because there's no rush. we got three weeks. Uh, there's going to be more information rising, people testing more things, doing more things with this hero. And then from there, you can decide. But at the end of the day, you guys got to summon what you enjoy. Um, if you do decide to summon for this hero, though, I can attest that he can absolutely contribute to any team uh, that you have. Just because, again, he's so easy to use. And his primary role is damage amplification. Not anything else. <laughs> He's not necessarily a support. He's not necessarily a pure DPS. He's just kind of just there to amplify his damage and your team's damage, and you can make the most of that. So anyway, guys, um, that's all I wanted to cover. I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another video. Uh, I actually really enjoy making these showcases for these heroes. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below, and I'll be happy to assist. And with that being said, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.